welcome to yet another exciting episode of Tonight with Zororo, featuring your host, Zororo Makamba, and your DJ, SK. Tonight, Zororo has a one-on-one interview with entrepreneur and comedian Carl Joshua Nudo. Described by CNN African Voices as the new face of Zimbabwean comedy, Carl broke into the Zimbabwean comedy scene with his debut one-man show, Carl Joshua Nube's Big Announcement, setting him up as the biggest Zimbabwean stand-up comedy export. You can join us in conversation on Twitter and follow us on at TWZ Show. And don't forget to include the hashtag TWZ. And now, give it up for your host, Zororo Makamba. Good evening, good evening and welcome to another episode of Tonight with Zororo. My name is Zororo Makamba. You know, Emily Kachote has been on my mind of late. She is, of course, the current Miss World Zimbabwe. Uh, they changed it from Miss Zim to Miss World um, in line with the international guidelines for branding. But she's representing our country. A beautiful girl who stood up to be counted and represent Zimbabwe. And there was so much hate that came out on social media. So much negativity about her complexion, about her body, about her style. And it had me thinking that we do this way too often as Zimbabweans. You know, every country, every society, every culture has his or her pull him down syndrome. But we are just particularly bad in Zim. Why can't we get behind Emily? Why can't we support her? Why can't we point out the positives? Why are we always, always, always trying to bring people down. You know, in, in Zimbabwe, being ambitious is a crime. It's a problem. Your dreams aren't validated, and you feel that what you want to do doesn't count. People either don't believe in you, or they don't believe in you, or they don't believe in you. So you find now that we have this generation of young people who want to be scientists, who want to produce their own TV shows, just like we're doing now, who want to cook for a living, but they're told that they can't. They are asked, well, why, why are you doing that? And there's never a, a concrete answer because we've seen other people get persecuted before. We, we see what happened with Emily on social media. So my advice to you is if you're able to do what you want to do, do it. You know, don't let someone else's limitation become yours. This is your life. This is your moment. Do what you want. Get away from those people. Get better friends, you know? Think about it. It's, it's something that's very dear to me. It's been a, I mean, we, we shot a documentary last year called Kushaya Zororo. Go watch it. Everyone said, well, why did you do it? Well, we're here now shooting this program, and that's why we did it. We'll be right back with the update. Welcome back. This is the update. SK, hey, I had to rant there. I had to get a couple of things off my chest, but it's something that uh, is very dear to me. I think it's a big problem uh, that we have here in Zimbabwe. Before you became SK, this brand, this radio DJ, have you ever experienced adversity from friends, family who said, SK, you know, your dreams aren't valid? I think, I think we've all gone through that. Mm. Yeah. Some worse than others. You know, you, you talk to your friends, guys, I have a dream. I want to be the next big voice on radio. Mm. And they were like, ah, guy, come on. Right. You. Zororo Makamba's already there. You like, know. Are you. <laughs> Where are you going to fit? <laughs> so you, you, always, you always have that. Even when you get in, like the first few days you're in there, they were like, ah, guy, stop it. Mm. You're not doing anything. So only until other people start to realize that, hey, this guy's got something. Right. That's when your own people start to accept it and embrace it and say, yeah, this guy has got something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I guess what, that's why they say, you know, success is a... It's a lonely road. There's this quote that I love. It's called, uh, it goes like this rather, friends uh, won't start celebrating you until strangers do. So food for thought. Stay tuned for the other side of Samora and then after that, Angry Mona. Yeah. Nandi. Udo finyama van. Eh? Ufinyame. Unoshanda yo nenda kubasa ufinyame la wawawangu. Ufinyama kunge, kunge zuzuku waza. Ndara chika isi? Ah, mpana. Kani inge? Kamix. Kwa shandike nazo. Kwa shandike nazo kutazi. Dino shanda na jochini, jochini. Dino rarandi chichima. Patinge didi pabasa, ntinenge ndi inacho. Ya. Untaura uti. 
Arushandike na. Yeah. Yo, ne basa mfana ndo pinda munana Mount Pleasant. Yeah. Do not shrink a mess and do not bongo than that road and this thing as well. Can I use it? We call use it and do not pinda. Do you want to send it right back? Do not pinda mess and do not bongo than this thing as well. I'm there, I'm going to be there. 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 Kavundiri ndi baba zinga ziwe, ha? Eh, unosiwa kune brook, borodel brook. Eh, au kwa kumbiri kama. Same life. Eh, dino tambira kwa sebo ya dino shika ne bas. Yeah. Mbana, ni ni mbana. Eh, kupare ya mendo no bas. Tupi na zima gete rukseri zire zimkodwe. Jufamani mkodwe ne dini moja ya basa. Hamdera maganya. Eh, pasal orang kurang nak, cina boleh faham ba? Diri tu. Ya, mana pasal orang bu, em, jero uru, um, pasi na ini, ni wan dosa dan awo, wan awal ramu. I do, you know, the west management. I'm, I'm a west manager. Oh, west management. Ya. Why is it? Udah jam bin. Ah, ban, udah jam bin, dah aku tuju, aku farisa. Wakuta wa wakuta kunyara. Aso serenda. Ino nzi waste management. Wote matoto bini food ya paso. Rasira nika wenye kada rasira ma bini zetu. Aso get bini. Aso serenda. Ya. You regret it. Judaba. Kuku pesi sir. Ulugu finya ma food. Ah. Kuku chagi raba sa go. We uba sa go ba. Nusuki na wajimbo pocha wa wa na wakuru. Au na wizira na go. Kuku tambo na wao. Basa le kuchenge tu ana mai koma na mo baada. Magdi ndiere ra. Au na wezira ra kwe. Wakwacha kwaga, wachapa ni shema. Magadi na zoga manch, nende m studio nchi ya kuda, esungu yangu ni wan, nini shaita the youngest zindanzo star, squash doni zari dim. Nafuna ridimu po 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 Emri mwana po 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 Andike, andike Awandikuwa nise Maruka za andikuwa nise Ayo, 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 ayo Andina wati pulo, andina wati pulo, andina wati pula Tosira ridimu Shawarki mba jore mbo anewa mwishu, da wati sungisa Ah, saka andi so original That was Angry Mwana and the other side of Samora. Uh, make sure you follow us on all the social media platforms and stand by for my interview with Carl Joshua Ngube. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Tonight with Sororo. My next guest is Zimbabwe's most successful comedian. Please help me welcome Carl Joshua Ngube. Carl? What's up? How are you doing? Welcome, bud. What's up? How are you doing? Are you I well? Am, I'm very good. It's I'm good very to good. see you. Good yeah. to see you. You wear so many different hats. And no hair. No hair. <laughs> yeah, it helps, yeah. <laughs> Already with the jokes. <laughs> but a lot of people don't know before you went into comedy and some of the things that you're doing now, uh, that you started off by studying nursing in the UK. Yeah, absolutely. Tell that, me about that experience. That was the trend at the time, right? Because like everyone went to study. Mm -hmm. nursing that's what that's what we did we're like yeah nursing so <laughs> so went there because my parents didn't want me to do the whole art thingy and animation thingy so uh, i went to do nursing and the agreement was that after nursing i would then do the like graphics or whatever this is what your parents wanted you to do yeah so i dropped out early wow yeah so <laughs> back when, when when was this uh this was uh 97 to 2001 and I understand that that's when you started cooking. You were like a... Uh, I've um, been cooking all my life. Yeah. Like I stole skills from both my parents. Like my dad was a, a teacher and a stand-up comic. And then my mom is a home economics lecturer. So mm -hmm. I kind of borrowed from both of them. Which is... What did you learn from that experience that sort of helped define the person that you've become now? A lot of successful people yeah. uh, tend to drop out of school. They don't even go to school. Yeah. Um, tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, getting hungry a lot. <laughs> it kind of makes you mm. figure out new things. Like, I've been in so many very bad places in, in my life. And especially when I was in England, things were really tough for me. And even when I came back, it was really tough starting from scratch. But I realized then I, 
I got the knack of starting things from scratch. That, that's a skill that I've developed, is, is always picking up the pieces and starting anything that I want, like right from the bottom and, mm -hmm. and bringing it up. If you don't mind, I want to touch on how bad things got. Yeah. I understand that you considered suicide at some point. I attempted twice. Attempted twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I, happened, so, bud? I, I, was, I was a bit dumb. I used the wrong uh, tablet. I just, I just <laughs> grabbed... Thankfully, you were I, dumb yeah, about yeah, it. I, yeah, thankfully. So I grabbed a... a um, we went, uh, they didn't extend our visas like to, to continue working in, in England. So mm. that was a bad prospect for me. I kind of thought like, listen, the world is over. People are going to make fun of me and that kind of thing. So I grabbed a, a box of uh, tablets, didn't check the, the label and then took, took the tablets the first time threw up and then did it again and it didn't work. So I figured, okay, I'm a failure at suicide. So let me, let me Coming try. Coming to Zimbabwe is not going to be that life bad. Is a lot, yeah, right? it might be a lot easier to do. And uh, something that people don't know um, about as well is the one stage um, the, the the demonstration you took yeah. um, against piracy yeah. where you slept on the streets right. uh, for seven days. Yeah, I think this was about five years ago. Yeah, <laughs> tell us about that. Well, the thing is, a lot of my friends are, are artists, musicians, and and that kind of thing. So mm. I've I've always been in the music uh, sector, working as a video director and stuff. So a lot of my friends kind of complained about the fact that they weren't making money, and I felt it was my responsibility at the time I was the executive producer for the Zimbabwe Music Awards that I should actually go on the streets and find out why people weren't buying music, why they weren't supporting local. And I found out a lot of information. I got to talk to the guys on the streets who were selling the music. I got to talk to a lot of uh, people who were walking past who, who preferred to say we're going to buy international content because the local guys aren't putting enough effort. There were so many different sides uh, to that particular argument. But that's kind of really formulated the person that I am from a comedy perspective as well. You did this alone. No one came and slept with you. Yeah, yeah I don't know. A few artists came, came out to support and stuff. We got Cindy coming out and like a, a number of different artists. But mm. you have to remember at the time also, uh, tragically, Sam Tukudzi died, I think on the second day of my protest. So it became mm. more of a, like, you know, just kind of remembering a, a young man who was like really talented and stuff that we lost and also didn't get to benefit from his music as well. Mm -hmm. Carl Josh Antgube is my guest tonight. Uh, keep it locked here on TWZ. We'll be right back after the short break. Welcome back. And just before the break, we're touching about your um, sleeping in the seven days, <laughs> sleeping in the streets for seven days. Rent free. Rent free. Yeah. Are you getting fed? Yeah, yeah. I, like I'd post on Facebook that I was hungry and people in offices would bring me pizza and Nando's. Like that's the easiest way to live. Like just go and do a demo. Five years later, do you yeah. think uh, the mood has changed, the attitude has changed towards local music and local content? Yeah, I think, I think the thing that I discovered is that Zimbabweans actually want something to be proud of. And I've noticed a lot in, in my comedy career is that every time I travel outside the country, we get a lot of people who want to then support you locally because of how you're pushing the brand of Zimbabwe outside. So mm -hmm. it really just formulated how I think about things. And I, I use that when I teach social media and that kind of thing to, to explain what your fans really want or expect of you. Mm -hmm. Trevor Noah landing that gig. <laughs> wow. Replacing yeah. Jon Stewart on the, the Daily Show. Wow. As a comedian here, your thoughts on that? Wow, that's a, it's an incredible thing for Big. African comedy. Yeah, it's huge. Big. I mean, Trevor Noah has broken a lot of boundaries. He's made it possible for a lot of us uh, comics to, to realize what's out there mm. uh, for African comedy. Um, it's also just brought on, I'm, I'm really lucky to have been part of this renaissance in terms of African comedy because you're now starting to see a lot more bigger shows happening in different countries where six or seven comics are being called up to perform at comedy festivals all over Africa. Mm. And I've been fortunate to be part of each and every one of them uh, as well. And what Trevor is doing like, for comedy is just it's incredible. It's have, you, have you met him personally? No, I haven't. He's like, of all the South African comics I've met, I've met all, pretty much all of them. But Trevor, no, I suppose because he's not really based in South Africa yeah. anymore. I, I it's haven't gonna met him. It's going to be pretty tough to meet him. I know, I know. I was like, damn it, I have to be on the Daily Show to, <laughs> to meet Trevor, which is cool. Well, what, what are the dynamics regarding censorship when it comes to comedy in Zimbabwe? You know, yeah. politics um, is always such a hot topic. Um, but, you know, as a comedian, yeah. you want to express yourself. You yeah. want to make people laugh. How do you juggle around the two? Yeah, we realize that our government is having a really tough time and the censorship board is having a really tough time policing the whole issue of, of mm. censorship and stuff. So as comics, we try our best to help the government as sponsorship as, as comics. So we, we self-censor so that the costs are not that great mm -hmm. uh, for them to have to do it uh, for us. So we do a lot of self-censorship. We don't, we, yeah, we, for me, it's all about nation building and trying to give people uh, hope and, and look at things from a different perspective. So comedy is therapy and I don't really want to antagonize certain situations. So it's, I, mean, I think we take, we take ourselves way too seriously. As yeah, we do. We've been through way too much. I think it's important for us to laugh every now and again. You should speak to some of our pastors. <laughs> you will notice, yeah, we take ourselves, yeah. 
I, I mean, I'm not really afraid. The government is actually more open-minded than yeah. our religious leaders are. So, mm. you know, um, the government has been a lot more supportive when it comes to comedy. They'll allow us to make fun of them to a certain extent. But I think uh, from a religious point of view, I think that's where our country still has some issues to deal mm. with. How much of the success that you've um, attributed so far in your career, um, how much credit of that goes to your wife? <laughs> All of it. Nelsie. <laughs> All of it. Like she's she's a, your manager too. Yeah, right? yeah she's, she's everything. I mean, the thing is, Nelsie allows me to focus on what I do best, which mm. is just be creative. So I, I don't even know what day of the week it is. Like, so uh, your head is she, like, she, she boom, does boom, that. She boom, ideas it. left, right and yeah. center. And, and she just figures out, she'll fight with me every single day to figure out how we're going to do it. So I'll say, yeah, let's go to Kadoma, let's change things around. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and she'll Do you force like, her to laugh at your jokes at each and every show? She'll be there front row. She's probably heard you rehearse them every single time. And no, she, she's, she's funny. I've seen her. She laughs like she's heard it for the first time. Yeah, I know. That, that's, <laughs> what I, that's what I don't understand. It's because when I'm telling her jokes at home, She's not really interested in mm. the jokes at home because I suppose she's watching international comedy and I'm more local based. So, you know, 51%. in terms of, yeah, so, so she's like, I ah, know that's a bit like, you know, local sort of standard. I'm still watching like the American stuff. But at the shows, she like lights up because it's a different vibe yeah, altogether of course. when the joke now hits the, the audience and stuff. So she's, yeah, she loves the loudest though, which is cool. We're going to take a short break and when we get back, we're going to ask Carl what he's up to at the moment. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm here with Carl and I think someone's about to join us. Yep. Hey, Chevy. Hey, my baby. Hey, my baby. Come, 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 come. What do we have here? Come, come. Hey, Chevy. Chevy. Woo. Okay, she, she I, prefers yeah. Zororo. She's like, come, come, my baby. I don't want to get bitten. Come, my baby. Come, 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 come to me. It's rare you see a black person with a dog like this. Yeah, I know. Um, what you don't realize is that this dog is really great at cleaning floors and stuff. We just like... Make her run across the floor with Cobra on her. <laughs> what's, what's her name? Her name is Sheffy. Yeah. So she's, um, she doesn't know it yet, but she's Zimbabwe's most famous dog. Um, she's like our little mascot. And she's still like two months old. Okay, stop biting, my baby. She's stop gonna, biting. Gonna Are you going to say something on TV? Are you gonna, you're on TV. Look, look. That is awesome. She look. must stay there, keep a distance. Carl, yeah. tell us some of the things that you're working on at the moment. Okay, cool. Uh, so we've moved to Kadoma. So we've mm. uh, just taken over a little hotel uh, in Kadoma. A little, um, it's a boutique hotel. But the whole idea, it's kind of a social media experiment to try and see, can we convert Kadoma into a tourist attraction? Mm. So it's, it's based on a couple of different variables, like the, the city needs a, uh, a football team. It needs, uh, it needs a, a landmark that's there. So we're you working have a on mascot a, right We've there. got a mascot as well. We need people to start traveling. They're traveling to our hotel specifically for the biggest burger uh, that you can get in, in Zimbabwe for How five big is bucks. It? How big is big? It's huge. I mean, it, it is about that big, right? And it's got cheese on the inside. I'm and lactose it's, it's, intolerant. Oh, Oh, it, oh, okay, cool. So we can put tofu no. in that burger. Also. No. <laughs> tofu, that but you're working on that. Congratulations. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and I bet you're cooking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm cooking. Yeah. Uh, I've designed a new menu for it. Uh, the, the issue is that we believe in kind of uh, uh, tourism uh, through like food and stuff because people will travel for a good burger, for good ribs and, and that kind of thing in, in other countries. And that's what we're trying to do. Uh, with Kadoma as well. And we're getting people traveling literally yeah. to, to, to come and see what we're cooking. And they're coming to, to get a picture with, with Sheffy, which is And I think she needs awesome. some food. She keeps biting on I, your hand. I know, I know. Thank you I so know. much, Carl. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> All right. We're going to play with the dog and we'll be right back after this. Keep it locked here. Keep it locked on TWZ. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thanks to Carl and his dog for joining us on TWZ tonight. Look out for Daniel Jenkins performing City Streets on the Coca-Cola Sound Stage. We'll catch you next week. I started in music when my father taught me how to play about six chords on guitar. And since then, I've just learned everything by myself. Been blessed enough to be able to have an ear for music, so yeah. I try to communicate my heart. Um, each song I write, basically, regardless if it's emotional or funk, dance, whatever, I just try to communicate my heart to other people and so people can relate to it. A fusion of everything. <laughs> I've got a, a lot of um, really slow emotional songs. I've got a pop funk song coming out soon. That song is actually a funk song. I've got a song that's sort of Mikasa based as well. So yeah, a lot of fusion. 
near future, you won't expect much because I won't be in Zimbabwe. <laughs> no, I'm off to Europe to play in Greece. Um, but near future, music videos and possibly being signed by a label. Wondering how within seems within my reach Going now, now, gonna break the town down and make a mark on For everything Thinking about bringing new sound, give me those bones Can you feel the beat? I'm saying there's got to be There's gotta be A bit of loving, loving in the streets that we have to bring that perfect harmony. There's got to be a little bit of loving, loving in the streets. There's got to be perfect serenity. Set in motion regardless of the commotion It's time to love again Light the streets with energy City on a hill, electricity For the world to see Thinking about bringing new sound Give it goosebumps Can you feel the beat? I'm saying there's got to be There's got to be love to be a little bit of loving, loving in the streets. We have to bring that perfect harmony. First, got to be a little bit of loving, loving in the streets. First, got to be perfect. Loving the streets. There's got to be. 